reversing. So with that all said, we do have frequencies. We are frequency-based beings. And so all of this that they're placing into us resonates on some level with some frequency. So How do those powers, frequencies these, get interrupted in our, in our bodies to cause these different problems? Pardon? How do the frequencies, like within the organs in our bodies, how do they get interrupted? What would interrupt the frequency and, and cause them to not function correctly? Well, okay, let's take a simple one. In this country, we have sleeplessness. People unable to sleep is epidemic. There's a drug, uh, every, you know, people are telling me, I don't watch TV, I don't have TV, I don't have a computer, I don't have a cell phone, I don't have any of those things. So I have to rely on other people filling me in. They tell me that, you know, commercials are rampant for sleeplessness in this country. Well, uh, Dr. Mike Castle explained to me one of the reasons is one of the frequencies they're slamming through us rather ongoingly is the same frequency that our sleep center in our brain. Well, that makes sense because if you want people sick and tired and apathetic, take their sleep away because it's during our sleep that we re de we re detoxify, we rebuild, you know. This is when all of our organs and body systems, so if you keep interrupting that, you're going to have somebody who doesn't feel very well, somebody who's kind of out of it because they haven't really gone into REM and gotten a good night's sleep. So that's a, an example. They know the frequencies of the different systems in our body. They know the frequency of, you know, your spleen. So, and what, what I'm being told by those who seem to know, and I trust who I work with, uh, I only work with people that I trust, and these are brilliant minds. I'm just the, <laughs> the little guy running around picking up all the gems and trying to, you know, sh get them together and share them out, but none of this is really from me. I'm just sort of the middle guy, mouthpiece. They're telling me that, that like, this new HDTV uh, has the ability to shoot whatever frequency they want at you. They can, and they, the, 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 these scientists were telling me this, and I, the universe always confirms for me very quickly um, something like that. And sure enough, I have a couple in Florida that I w was working with, clients, and I was trying to tell them, please, please, please don't bring this technology in. They did. Anyway, <laughs> everybody does. They just have to have their TV. And she called me. She said, oh, Dr. Scott, oh, my God, you're right. Because we sat down to watch a show the other night, and at the exact same moment, both my husband and I grabbed our left knees, and they were in excruciating pain for no reason. No, so we're talking about... that ability. So we're talking about these big screen TVs, uh, that, you know, the flat screen TVs that are now in just about everybody's homes. Dr. Yes. Scott, uh, various, various yes, technologies. It's the technology. It's the HD TV high definition technology. And these TVs, the only TV you're really kind of okay with uh, is, a, is an old analog and don't plug into the cable or, the, or put a, a satellite on your roof because the new technology is designed to harm you. <laughs> These are all Trojan horses that we've so happily embraced and brought into our home. And I get confirmation all the time. Uh, I'm working with a gentleman now who has to be on the computer all day. See, they've really put us in a little prison here because many people have to go to these things to, to make a livelihood. And so we're trying to mitigate the impact. But he has all these pseudo life forms and just coming out of his hands and the tips of his fingers because he's on the computer all day. And they're attracted to that energy. Um, so if you can, if you can not have TV, and that one I think most everybody can, uh, it's whether they want. But if you can not have a computer, don't. But if you have to have it, don't play on it. You know, be on it for, the, for what you need and then get off. Don't sit there and play with it. What about the limit What about and, cell phone? And, and your cell phone. Don't go walking through the store talking to your friend about what you did last night. Use it as an emergency tool to be used very sparingly. Uh, I don't have one. But if you have to have one, feel like you need one, um, 
and use it very sparingly. See, I have to say the design of how they've gotten us, where they've gotten us, was really pretty brilliant. They presented these toys, these distractions to us, and we embraced them. We never asked questions about them. We, oh, this is wonderful. And we never really looked at it. And I have to say good for us in a way, because that implies there's a trust and a loving nature to us that we couldn't have imagined in a million years. I have to say, uh, going back before I started my work 12 years ago, I didn't, couldn't have in a, mu- a thousand million years imagined what I'm seeing now and the design and the malice and the demonic attempt to harm all life. And as Doc Castle said, it's not just humans. The transmutation, and that's what he calls it, and he's quite right, the transmutation is all life form. All life form every living thing. And and as Clifford is always pointing out, in the last 10 years, we have lost more species off this planet than in the entire recorded history of man. Dr. Scott, um, you told a, a story, I heard a wonderful story. It was about the origination of the red wine test, which is a test that anybody can do. And could you please tell us how you discovered the red wine test and how our listeners could do that all for themselves at home? Well, you know, I have to call this divine intervention. Um, Okay, first I'll tell the story and then we can talk about... Because, well, I know a lot of people don't want to know, but if you want to know, if you have involvement in your body, this is how to do it or one of the ways. But the way it originated is uh, I don't go to anybody in the Western allopathic community. I take care of it myself. A couple, three years ago, I broke my leg. I took care of it myself with the help of many beautiful people, healers, my fellow who did the vacuuming, you know, on and on. But I don't go into that community anymore. Okay, so I had a really bad toothache. Uh, You know, just (laughs) blinding pain. So I went into the bedroom and got under the covers, which I never do unless I'm really, really, really in trouble. And I started in prayer. Please, please, please. Now, we all have the, the please, please, please we turn to. I'm not a religionist, so you please, 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 whoever. In my case, it is Jesus, because I've known, I've had a relationship with him since I was a child. But anybody has can have a relationship with any spiritual whatever out there, okay? I just want to say that. I'm not a religionist. Okay. So I'm under the covers going, please, please, please. I, I, can't ha- I, can't ha- I can't hack it. What do I do? And very clearly in my head, swish your tooth with red wine. I thought, okay. I never would have thought of that. And I do drink red wine with my meal in the evening. And um, I came in. I had red wine. I swish, 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 swish and spit in the sink, which is white, and my heart stopped. I was, holy cow, what is this stuff? But the pain level went down, so I did it again and again and again until I had no pain, but I had two sinkfuls of material that was just unreal to me. So I called Clifford, which I try never to do. He's an hour and a half away. And I said, Clifford, you've got to come. You've got to come with your camera right away. This is incredible. And he trusts me. He knows I'm not going to cry wolf. So he comes, and he goes, holy cow, how did this happen? And I told him. And so he took sample. He brought, um, he's smart, he brought slides, and he took sample for slides. And then he took photographs, which are, to this day, you can find them on his website. If you go back in time, two or three years, four maybe now, And he took the slides back, and he called me, and he said, this is a perfect match to the pseudo-lifeform fibers coming out of the, you know, the sores on Morgellons people. So this is more of the same coming out of your mouth. So if you are interested in finding out if this material is in you, and they do love uh, to store in the teeth, gum, chin area, head, the whole head, 
you can do that. And I would recommend a good organic. It has to be red. Um, the white wine, white grape juice. If you don't, if you if you are alcohol sensitive, but if you do do grape juice, it has to be a good organic, and it's getting harder and harder to find because the conventionals. I tried all of them. They don't do anything. Nothing is drawn because they're so denurtured and chemicalized. But a good organic purple grape, uh, swish 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 spit. Now after you're finished with that, rinse your mouth, scrape your tongue, clear clear your mouth. Now, people have said to me, oh, wow, this is amazing. Is this the way I can get rid of all this stuff around my teeth and gums? Of course, this will not work if you've had your teeth extracted because there will be no pathway for these things to exit. So if you've had your teeth pulled, this won't work. Okay, but what, what I want to say as a big warning to anybody who chooses to do this, if you continue to do it as an ongoing therapy, you run the danger and the probability of losing all of your dental work and some of your teeth or all of them. So you'll have to decide how often or if at all you want to do this as a therapy. But we're talking about it now as simply a test to see if um, these pseudo life forms are in you. Now if your sink isn't white, if it's stainless steel, you're going to need to spit into a, a white bowl or something where you can see what you're doing. Dr. Scott, I put a white paper towel in the bottom of my white sink. And oh, there I, you go. I spit through that, and then I use a water pick with, uh, I put a little hydrogen peroxide in just to uh, freshen my mouth afterwards and use the water pick, and I get a whole lot more out. And The cleaning of the tongue has been a profound experience for me. It's yeah, changed the tongue the entire doors texture. And... My tongue has not had a good texture for probably 20 years. They love the tongue. They love the whole head. Um, I would say, though, rather than the peroxide, I'd, I'd rather see you do some Himalayan pink salt um, in that That is hard water to pick. find. That's Himalayan pink hard... salt? Yeah. Oh, I think you can... You, well... Uh, I get mine from Swanson's Health Products. Okay. It's very reasonable. Oh. Um, that's where I would send people, but uh, be that as it may, yeah, just make sure you rinse your mouth thoroughly so that you're not swallowing back into the system these things. But it, it, it's um, it seems like, I don't want to make this as a statement of fact, but it seems like the more dental work people have, the more fully involved they are. Yes, I, what I mean I by that, that is when I get clients who have maybe one tooth with one filling, they don't seem to produce. I think these pseudo life forms uh, and all the dentistry that has been foisted on us has really encouraged uh, the growth and proliferation of these things around our teeth and gums. That's an interesting comment well, because when I tested yeah. my daughter, who is 28 years old and has no dental work, she came up with very little. Uh -huh. And I was trying to figure out what the difference was, why she tests with so little and I tested with so much. Do you have a lot of dental work? I have probably eight teeth back there that are... Okay. You know. Did you ever have a, a root canal? Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, see, um, they've really 